Guys, welcome to the Beer Boost, where I make videos to help myself put down the razor as well as save some beers along the way, right? And today we're going to be talking about this little thing. Well, not only this, but also its strange cousin, the comb. Now, beard brushes and combs, right? It can get a little bit complicated in the beginning, especially if you don't know which one to choose. It might seem like common sense to go from one to the other, but we're going to kind of get into the details of it in this video. Ready? Set. Let's go. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. All right, guys, before we get started, please make sure you are hitting that subscribe button as I do plan on uploading weekly so you guys can kind of keep up with the content. And so, yeah, let's get started. All right, so when deciding between a comb and a beard, you have to kind of see how long is your beard. If it's stubble or if it's short, usually a couple of millimeters away from your face, you're not going to want to use this yet. Why? Because it's not really going to do anything for you. Um, however, a beard brush should probably be one of the tools in your arsenal, especially in the beginning of your beard journey. Why is that? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, beard brushes have multiple uses, right? They can exfoliate your face. They can spread the cream, the oils, whatever sort of product that you're kind of applying. Um, they can help spread it a little bit better, right? And one of my favorite things about the beard brush is that it actually allows for uh, the patcher guys like me to be able to kind of add more volume to your beard. So it looks fuller. It looks like there's actually a lot more coverage in it than it actually kind of is, right? <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, this little tool has a way of exfoliating, right? So it can exfoliate your dead skin cells, which sometimes as you grow your beard out you'll kind of notice it's either gets flaky or there's dandruff or anything like that and beard brushes really really aid in reducing those things outside of adding of course your creams or your butters or your oils things like that you do need to kind of scrape off and exfoliate all that nasty dead skin so especially as the beard starts to kind of get it longer and that actually leads me to my next thing. The biggest issue with the beard getting longer is that this also becomes a little bit of, not I wouldn't say useless, I just say that it would kind of be secondary, right? Secondary in only to the next tool that we're gonna talk about, which is the comb, right? <laughs> this little nifty tool is supposedly from Kent, but uh, as you can see, it says Kent and Son. I got this from Amazon. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got ripped off, but I mean, what are you going to do, you know? <laughs> Amazon sometimes is hit or miss. So anyways, going back to the topic. Now, these little things, uh, well, let me just cover that. So Kent brushes, or rather Kent combs, are supposed to be really, really good. Well, because as your beard gets longer, the brush is going to kind of lose a little bit of its usefulness. Why do I tell you that? Yes, it can still exfoliate. Yes, it can still get into your skin. But for styling purposes, you're not going to want to use a brush. You're going to want to use a comb uh, as your beard gets bigger and longer. Actually, this would also kind of be useless. Why? Well, this probably would turn more into a mustache comb than anything else, right? Um, obviously, as your beard gets longer, especially if you're growing a year, a year long beard, you would want a comb with more space in between the teeth as well as bigger. Um, but for now, this works just fine for me. Going into detail though on the uses, well, not only is it good for styling, it could also help a little bit of spreading the products that you might be using all around your face, right? Um, but it's mostly generally used for styling. This particular uh, comb is supposed to be a Kent comb, but as you can see, it's not quite it. <laughs> I don't exactly know if this is genuine or not, but usually Kent combs come with just the word Kent and the little symbol. So I don't know who Kent's son is, but I don't know. Um, I lost $12 on Amazon. What are you going to do? Uh, which actually brings me to my next point. These little things, when it's genuine, it's actually pretty expensive, especially when you think about it, it's $12 for a comb, right? So these things are not made out of the regular plastic that you would otherwise see in the dollar combs that you see at Walmart or anything like that. Why? Why would you get this one instead of those combs? Well, those combs tend to come with the teeth all messed up with leading a little bit of plastic here, a little bit of plastic there. You put it through your through your beard, and then guess what happens? Boom, 
you're either pulling hairs, you're causing breakage, or you can cause irritation to your skin. Now, these little things are handmade when they're real. They are well-crafted when they're real. And they're also have a very, very good reputation of lasting a really, really long time. When they're real, don't be like me. Double check what you're buying, especially if you're going to spend $12 or more on a comb. You really want to know what you're getting. Uh, this was a big mistake. But you live and you learn. What are you going to do? So guys, what are you currently using? Is it a brush? Is it a comb? Is it both? I don't know. You you still haven't told me, so how would I know? Come on, now we're trying to make conversation here, right? So that's the video for today. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more content. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yo, yo, microphone check. We get a mic.